Alright, hopefully I get to kill pe people soon, because uh, right now it's just a lot of reading and a lot of flying. Oh, fuck. Well, apparently the Aurorans want to shoot me down. Okay, fuck off, little bastard. Get out of here. Uh, I want to use the hypergate. That's not the hypergate. Okay. Please don't hurt me. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's too close to the carrier. Now what am I going to do? Okay. I guess I'll just have to uh, kill off some people before I use the hyper gates. Which works for me, I guess. You little fucker. Alright, there's the carrier. Hmm, I wonder if I can uh, steal this ship. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. Too many railguns. Alright. Thank God. Let's go. Excuse me, I seem to have a runny nose. Hopefully I'll be able to get smoke some Federation dudes soon. Alright. Drop off this guy. If I can land. There we go. It has been good fighting alongside you, Orihara, says Eamon as he leaves. For in your chosen fields of war, you are a true master. The ancient Gales called people like you warrior poets, for they understood that to master the arts of war required a man to master his soul. I would be honored to call you my battle brother. Having traveled extensively throughout Auroran space and learned a little about its warrior culture, you realize that this offer is not given or received lightly. By offering to become your battle brother, he has indicated that he holds your life to be much of greater value than his own. You are touched and bow deeply, replying that the honor would be entirely yours. The two of you grip forearms, and you both make a small incision on the back of your hands, letting your blood mingle. Good luck, my brother, Eamon says by way of farewell. If any songs are sung about these days, I will make sure that your name is mentioned before that of all others. Yeah, and I hope I don't get AIDS from swapping blood with you, sick bastard. You'd think in the future people would be a little more aware about things like that. I guess not. Alright, I gotta head all the way back to Rebel Space. Shit. Okay. You are greeted by your supervisor, GF, as you walk down the ramp. I'm guessing that Eamon let slip who I am, he says without preamble. You reply that Mr. Flanagan is of the opinion that you are Frandall. Well, he's right, chuckles Frandall, and it's good to see that you are keeping your cards close to your chest, even with me. Especially with you, you reply with a sardonic smile. Frandall laughs. So you got everything in place? Yes, and you nod con in confirmation. Excellent. Meet me in the bar in two hours. We have another mission that I believe can only be completed by you. All right. Frandall enters the bar with General Smart, and they both make their way over to your table. We have just received the news that Raxx Roughnecks left Space Dock 5 yesterday morning, says General Smart quietly. Things are now officially out of your our control, but we can try to channel them a little from here. General Smart is going to lead the entire Rebel fleet in an attack on various Federation military targets in the hope that it will draw away ships from the Auroran campaign, giving the Heron House a better chance of surviving, explains Frannel in an equally hushed tone. Unfortunately, our entire military doesn't amount to much against the might of the Federation Navy, and if they are allowed to react effectively, we will be crushed, he continues grimly. Needless to say, this is not the desired outcome. We need someone, General Smart says gravely, to decapitate the Bureau in order to cause a little chaos and confusion. Are you interested? Yes. Please let me kill stuff. 
Excellent, exclaimed General Smart. We believe that without leadership, the Bureau will take as much as a week to start reorganizing, and the Federation Navy will be effectively broken up into a large number of smaller units that we will be, we will be able to deal with. The head of the Bureau currently goes by the name of Crane, Franel informs you. Yeah, I know I met her. And she is usually seen in the uniform of a Federation Navy commander. She is mid-30s, 5'5", slim with blonde hair and blue eyes. General Smart turns to stare at Frandall. I wasn't aware that we knew that much about the leader of the Bureau. She was my best pupil, reminisces Frandall. But she always did prefer to club things to death when a more surgical solution would suffice. Finesse was never her strong point. Anyway, she con he continues, snapping out of his reverie. She has been seen recently in the Wolf 359 system, traveling in a ship called the Prodigal Zone. Which I already killed uh, earlier, but whatever. Go there, disable her ship, capture her, and return here. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, she was a bitch anyway. I'm oh, sorry, Pegasus. Well, apparently the Federation still doesn't hate me that much, so still travel through their system without them attacking me. Alright, Prodigal Son, where are you? There you are. And you have some escorts, I see. Okay, no, come back! Come back! Oh god. What now? Alright, well, maybe she'll be back. Ah, yeah, there she is. Um, come on, there we go. Oh, fuck! Damn it! No! 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 Alright, it's okay. I can fix this. And I apologize for failing twice. There we go. Alright. Got her. Let's get the fuck out of here. So, for the fact that I have their uh, commander in my ship, they really don't seem to be chasing me much. You do know, Mr. Orihara, the stunningly attractive Commander Crane informs you, that you are going to be killed when my people find you. If you return me now, I will reward you by making you one of my lieutenants, where you have an enormous amount of power and influence. What do you say? You sn What is with me in snorting? You snort quietly to yourself at her attempts to buy you off. You ignore her continuing attempts as you pilot your ship into the docking bay. After completing your post-flight routine, you pick her up and march her out to the waiting reception. You are greeted by all rebel leaders, except Frandall, who is nowhere to be seen. The beautiful Crane looks at them imperiously and asks them what it feels like to be fighting on the losing side, especially now that the Bureau knows of the location of this base. General Smart laughs. You may find that not all your information regarding this station is completely correct. Take her away. As she is led away, you feel a tap on your shoulder and you turn to see a man who is vaguely familiar, indicating that you should follow him. He takes you into one of the many intel offices and turns to you. If you're wondering why you don't recognize me, he says with the familiar voice of Frandall, it's because I've had surgery to alter my appearance. I don't want to be recognized in public by that young lady and revealed. You did very well on the last mission, he continues cheerfully, but unfortunately we will need a couple of other weapons against her. You see, we want to put her in a Velos trial, but the Velos are still an enslaved race. He holds up a hand to stall your questions. Yes, I know the propaganda says that they now serve the Federation willingly, he explains cynically. I created it, but it isn't true. I have an idea, though, he continues thoughtfully. Keep an eye out here. Once I've hammered out all the details, I'll be waiting for you. Okay. Well. There we go. There you are, exclaims Frandall, after the two of you spot each other in this fairly crowded establishment. I was beginning to wonder when you were going to turn up. While you are away, I've come up with a method to have a Velos trial where the Velos are actually capable of handing down the right decision, he explains. You see, because the Velos are enslaved and can be literally ordered to do anything, 
They are very useful to the Bureau in this field of justice because the Velos, who is allegedly meant to be reading the truth of statements of the accused, can actually be ordered to answer it a specified way. The Bureau has used this trick for years to bias the courts. Now since Crane's underlings are demanding her return, saying that if she has done anything wrong, she should stand trial, I wanted to figure out a way of ensuring the impartiality of the Velos judge so that she can indeed stand trial. At the end of the day, if she is found guilty, then the Bureau will be basically defeated. Are you interested in hearing my solution? Yes. It is simple, really, he explained slowly. The Velos are telepaths. It appears that there is a way for another telepath to take the strain, leaving the Velos free from the burden of their enslavement. Now, I just happen to know that the Polaris have a number of telepaths among them, he continues with a savage glint in his eye. None are anywhere near as powerful as any Velos, but a small group of them should be able to do the job. That's where you come in. I've already contacted the Polaris in the matter that they have agreed to help in... In the matter, oh, excuse me, I've already contacted the Polaris in the matter, and they have already agreed to help in the matter, as they feel that they have an enormous debt to the Velos for protecting them from a colonial council invasion some centuries ago. Once you come back from Muar, Hero, Muar Harrow in the Muhari system with those Polaris telepaths, he says with a sudden cold resolution, we can take the young crane to trial, and the Bureau will be no more. You realize that this cold, hard man before is the real Frandal whom you are seeing for the first time. Okay. Well, this is a good place to stop for now, and I will continue this again later.